Chevy removes the Camaro branding for 2025. NASCAR switches to Ticketmaster and fans are not happy. Plus, Daniel Ricciardo out at RB in Formula One. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. So obviously we all are aware that Toyota and Ford both got new bodies for the 2024 season. Toyota got an updated Camry body and Ford got an updated Mustang body to switch over to the Dark Horse model. And obviously finally they put the uh, actual Mustang branding on them visible so you could actually see it because if not, it just looked like this generic car going down the racetrack and Mike Joy's like, well, this is what they wanted. That's what the use like is blacking out emblems but this is a marketing platform and you need to actually know what that car is for you know the casual fan that tunes in, so they finally put it back on. Now it's left Chevy sitting around being like, we would really love to get a new car, a new body, but they can't do that because there's currently no cars in the Chevy lineup. They just ended the Malibu, they ended the Camaro at the end of the 2023 production cycle, and the Corvette's the only car that's left and making a mid-engine sports car into a front-engine race car would look really awkward and dumber than what the Supra looks like in the Xfinity series, so it doesn't seem like they're going to do that. Now they kind of sit around in purgatory and this Camaro body will continue to exist into 2025 except for the fact that it will not have Camaro branding on it any longer. William Byron and Ross Chastain have both put out their 2025 paint schemes and on the rear bumper of both of those cars, instead of saying Camaro like it does this year, as you can see on William Byron's car, it just says Chevrolet across the rear bumper of the 2025 cars, which you can see right here as well, in both Ross Chastain and on William Byron's car. Uh, they are just removing the Camaro branding because, well, you can't actually buy a Camaro anymore. Sure, there's still some left on lots around the country, but you can't go into the dealership and order one. So marketing a car that doesn't exist doesn't really make any sense. Chevy has fielded the Camaro in the Cup Series since the 2018 season. And honestly, it's a pretty good looking race car, all things considered. From the Gen 6 era to the Gen 7 era, it's been pretty consistent. It got off to a slow start in 2018. Remember back then when they were a lot like Ford this year where they weren't winning anything and then they finally started to knock off some wins. And it's been one of the more dominant cars, especially in what, 2020, 2021. And even in the next gen era, it's been very strong strong and people expected Chevy to kind of take a step back this year but obviously Kyle Larson and Hendrick Motorsports have led the way uh, winning races for Chevrolet. Daniel Suarez and Austin Dillon also picked up victories as well so it really hasn't been that step back that maybe some people were thinking it would be but at the same time they definitely want to move up. Now one thing that we have heard about the current Chevy body especially in the Gen 7 um, uh, car and Denny Hamlin has pointed this out as well is that the Chevrolet is the best body that is out there. It is the best, and NASCAR won't let either manufacturer, either being Toyota or Ford, go beyond what Chevrolet has, especially when it comes to uh, downforce. So whatever Chevy has, that's kind of the box you can work in. You can never be better than what the Chevy uh, Camaro body is. So it's not a bad body by any means, but it certainly is a body that Chevrolet would love to tweak on, love to make some changes to, especially seeing what both Toyota and Ford have done but they can't do it at this point. So for now, we're just going to sit around and see if Chevrolet introduces a new model. Will there be a new Camaro that comes out? Uh, seems unlikely at this point. Or are we going to see a switch in brands? Or are they just going to continue to run with this Camaro body and just use she or use NASCAR as a marketing platform for Chevrolet as a whole? Uh, a lot of questions remain up in the air for General Motors and whether or not they would consider switching out brands or whether or not they will introduce a new vehicle to the lineup. Now, of course, they could introduce a hybrid sports car um, or even an all-electric sports car. The current uh, Toyota Camry that is racing in NASCAR, you you can't buy just a standard internal combustion engine version of that car. The only way that you can buy that car is with a hybrid system on it. So, you know, from a marketing standpoint, they're really marketing the, you know, the nameplate and the brand, not so much that like, hey, this is a performance car. Maybe that's something Chevrolet looks at as well. But for now, it's going to be the Camaro body, just not actually the Camaro. Now moving on to something that will have NASCAR fans pretty upset, more upset than they typically are. And they're usually upset most weeks more often than not, whether it's Toyota, NASCAR, Ford, Chevy, uh, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, some, they're always mad at somebody, something tires, Goodyear. Uh, so they're going to be mad this week and honestly can understand the frustration. NASCAR announced on Thursday that all ISC tracks, which of course are owned by NASCAR, Daytona, Talladega, Martinsville, Watkins Glen, and a number of other ones will be joining SMI on the Ticketmaster platform and a move which NASCAR says will make the fan experience easier. And I'm not sure a lot of people will agree with that. So like a lot of times when it comes to NASCAR decision making, I generally always understand the decision that they make. Doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with it, but I understand the reasoning behind it. This is one of those instances where 
I understand it. I don't agree with it. Dealing with Ticketmaster is a lot like dealing with Frontier. Yeah, you'll get what you want out of what you're paying for, but you leave it wondering, man, did I get robbed there? There's gotta be a better experience than this. And you don't feel very good about yourself afterwards. It feels like you gotten taken advantage of. And that's exactly what Ticketmaster does. As somebody pointed out on Twitter when NASCAR announced this, their fees for uh, Nashville, for the IndyCar Nashville race were $43. For the NASCAR Cup Series race at Richmond, six bucks. And that's because NASCAR uses tickets.com and not the Ticketmaster platform. Ticketmaster just continues to gouge people in terms of fees. For a family of four looking to go to Bristol, you're already going to be set back four to $500 for the tickets. And then on top of that, you're going to have to pay another $125 more than likely in fees to go to that race. And that is a massive blow for anybody that's ready to go check out. And the number of abandoned carts, I'm sure when people reach that point is probably pretty staggering. It's like when you go to check out on Airbnb and then you see all the fees and there's like, oh, there's a $750 cleaning fee. And you're like, the entire stay was only $400. Like, why would I, why would I spend that? Same situation here. You're getting down to the point where people are stretched thin on ter in terms of the budgets that they have to go to entertainment events, whether that's baseball, football, soccer, hockey, basketball, uh, concerts, Broadway, whatever you want to go to. People generally have a set budget for that. Now you're introducing a ticketing platform, which is going to cost them more money. And they're going to sit back and think and be like, mm, do I want to spend the $625 to go to Bristol or do I want to go to, you know, a couple baseball games or an NFL game or something along those lines, you're going to have people that are going to start making decisions now because they're essentially having to buy a fifth ticket in a lot of situations in terms of fees. And that's just not working or an additional ticket, whether or not that's, you know, coming from your family of four, family of two, whatever it is, you understand what I'm saying here. It's, it's a bummer. It's really unfortunate, and unfortunately, the fans are the ones that are losing out here. A number of people were really upset about it on, on Twitter, and I completely understand it. For a lot of people, going to a race is like generally a once-a-year thing. It's a big-time experience. Some people travel, they stay in hotels, and now when you're going to essentially be raising the prices on them because of these fees, it's going to have a lot of people considering whether or not they want to take that trip to Daytona or whether they want to take that trip to Michigan or Watkins Glen or wherever that uh, track may be that they want to go to because then you have to deal with price gouging on hotels, assuming it's in an area uh, that is pretty limited on hotel space, like a Bristol or a Martinsville or something like that. And then you have your costs of travel, food, everything that goes into it. It's getting pretty expensive to go to these races. And now if you're like, hey, it's going to cost you an extra, you know, 50 to $100, it's like, well, that's a tank of gas. You know, that's a cheap airline ticket in some situations. Uh, that's meal for a day. Like, there's people that are going to make decisions here whether or not they want to go to it. And it's really unfortunate because there are better platforms out there. I mean, heck, NASCAR is already on one with tickets.com. And I get it. The reach of Ticketmaster is um, substantially larger than anything else. 100% understand that. But when it comes to taking care of the fans, this just isn't the answer. There's also a reason why uh, the Justice Department has filed a lawsuit against Ticketmaster. But that's uh, for a different discussion. It's just a bummer for the fans. And unfortunate news to end today's program on, Daniel Ricardo is out of his seat at RB. The Australian, the honorary American, got the boot after 18 rounds into the 2024 season, which is highly unfortunate. Yes, he only beat teammate uh, Yuki Tsunoda in eight of the 18 rounds this year and only three of the seven rounds that he raced in last year. Of course, he did break his wrist uh, at the Dutch Grand Prix last year as well, so he missed a number of races. He is now out of that seat for the remainder of the season. Liam Lawson will take over that ride who subbed for him last year um, at Alpha Tower when before it got changed to RB. Lawson, it seems like his contract that he has with Red Bull guaranteed him a race seat for the 2025 season. There may have also been some sort of clause in there that said that he had to do five races or so in 2024. That seems a little bit murky. But for Dana Ricardo, he deserved a better send off than what he got from the Red Bull Racing family. Obviously, we went into Singapore last weekend and everybody kind of knew that the elephant in the room was that Ricardo would not be back once we got back into action at the United States Grand Prix in October because there's another random like late summer break happening here. Fall break. Is that what kids are doing now in school? They're doing it in Formula One, too. So Ricardo went into the weekend knowing that he probably wasn't coming back, but there's no confirmation on it. And then he just has to cry in front of the cameras and being like, it was a really fun time. I'm glad I got to experience it. 
And honestly, that's a terrible way to treat a guy that has given so much to the Red Bull family, an eight-time race winner, seven times with Red Bull, including a Monaco Grand Prix, uh, twice finishing third in the uh, overall championship. The guy is a really stout race car driver. He maybe lost his way a bit when he left the Red Bull family and went over to Renault, but he wanted to be a number one driver. And I'll never fault somebody for taking that chance and wanting to be a number one driver. Could he have won more races in his career staying at Red Bull? Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, he knew he would never be a championship contender if he was alongside Max or Stoppen because Max is the number one in the team. Everybody knows that. So he went off to try to do his own thing. It didn't work out at Renault. Quickly realized that the Endstone team just doesn't have it in him to compete for a world championship. Then he bounced over to McLaren, got him a victory at Monza, um, never left, obviously. And then McLaren bounces him out and replaces him. And it's just unfortunate. He found his way back to the Red Bull family. And it seemed like before this year's summer break, I mean, we literally went from a couple of months ago, him being talked about as a possible replacement for Sergio Perez at the senior Red Bull team to being bounced out of the junior team weeks, a little bit over a month after that. Confusing, unfortunate, and a bit of a bummer to see one of Formula One's best characters not be on the grid. But at the end of the day, RB is a driver development team for Red Bull. Daniel Ricciardo is not a development driver. Daniel Ricciardo is very much a Formula One driver, and there just really wasn't a place for him or a future with him at that team. So, hey, hopefully he comes over and does some NASCAR stuff now. I mean, he has a home in America. He's openly talked about wanting to do NASCAR stuff, and getting him into an Xfinity car would be really, really fun. And obviously, we've seen other people make the transition before as well. So, Daniel Ricciardo, come over to America, race in NASCAR. Heck, let's get him to run a full ARCA season at that. I'd love to have a picture of him and Brad Smith together, but a lineup of Tony Bridinger, Marco Andretti, Daniel Ricciardo, and Gus Dean on the high banks of Salem, absolutely phenomenal um, at that. I mean, hey, Juan Pablo Montoya did go from racing in Monaco to racing the ARCA race in Talladega within months of each other. So it could happen. I'm just saying it could happen. So let me know in the comments what you think about uh, Chevy removing the Camaro branding, NASCAR going to Ticketmaster, and Daniel Ricciardo being out at Red Bull, RB, whatever it is. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.